Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Denman, and I am so compelled to share some things with you. I have literally been shaken um, by something that I think is urgent. It's urgent in the world right now um, for our young people, but also it affects a lot of people. And uh, I just feel so stirred to share this with you. It really um, I can't even explain to you how much it hit my heart today. Um, so I want to share with you a little bit, you know, about my story and um, how it relates. So there's a young girl named Gabby Petito. I hope I'm saying her name right. I apologize. I'm doing this on emotion right now because I'm so um, riveted. But so there's this young girl, this little influencer, sweet girl that um, went missing and they did find her body. I know that's in the midst of that right now where they do think they have her, they found her body. And I can't even tell you what God showed me about this whole thing. And it just breaks my heart. My heart is just ripped by this whole story. And I just wanna share with you because there's so much here. It's so deep and there's so much to learn by this um, tragedy. There's a lot to learn by it. You know, I, I remember somebody saying one time, every life is either a warning or an example. And unfortunately, this is, um, this is heart-wrenching, um, this beautiful girl. And so um, there's so much in her story about that we can learn um, in her by her life. And uh, she was just this young girl full of life. You can see her joy and her love and um, really, and there's an innocence about her. I really think that she's just a real pure soul, um, just an innocent girl and, um, you know, has been an influencer and has had quite of an audience and uh, has been traveling. Um, you know, she has this boyfriend that she's known since she was in high school, I guess. And they went on this travel journey in a van, um, kind of trek across the country and, um, you know, vlogging and things like that. And the thing in this story, there's so much going on, but it's a warning. And then first of all, let me just explain to you, explain to you why. Um, I saw immediately just some things with her. I, I have a very similar background where I, as a young girl, was very influenced by the new age. And there's a whole lot to that, which I will explain more. What does that mean? But there's a whole kind of philosophy of the new age and it's entrenched in everything now. You can't even avoid it at this point. It's in media, it's in TV, it's in commercials, it's in clothing, it's in stores, it's in songs, it's in books. It's, um, you know, I was very, I was very heavily in, influenced it through Oprah and I love Oprah. So this is, but is it, that's how the influence started for me is it was, it's very, very much something Oprah was promoting. And I became very influenced as a young girl. So I was, you know, just out of college and searching, you know, I had this big job. I was making all this money in pharmaceutical sales, you know, all this success and reaching what, you know, is supposed to be the dream. And I found that the more success that I had just out of school, like the emptier I was, I was sad. I, I was lonely. Um, I was traveling by myself as a rep. So I was, I was alone a lot. And, um, I just found myself very sad. And in that sadness, I actually wrote, like wrote a letter to God. And I was like, dear God, use my life. You know, I just said, use me, God. And that was my prayer. And from that moment, and, and this is right relates with Gabby, and I'll tell you why, because it's the same age. So I was about, I was actually about the same age. And so I was like, use my life. And what started then was a series of really being misled, not knowing I was, maybe it was part of the grand plan, but it literally stepped into just what seemed innocent, seemed very innocent and um, started by reading certain books and things. And the reason why my heart is so gripped is I could see Gabby and just her heart and her love and her joy. And, you know, mine was as well. Like I, I went into pharmaceuticals because really my whole intent was I want to help, you know, it was really about people. I wanted to like, can we help them heal? You know, that kind of, you know, feeling and, and, and um, 
so I can see that in her and I really believe that you know all the things that have happened and uh and what's happened with her life is I could see that influence because it's an influence it's an influence and if you don't know you know if you're you know not raised in a Christian home or maybe she is I don't know and I can't I can't speak to that but you know I even was but I didn't know even I mean I went to church but I didn't know and um I can see that influence and there's a lot of reasons for that. And I'll explain that a little bit more and, I, and I'll kind of go deeper into that to help you understand that. But definitely that influence was in her life. And the, the thing that I'm seeing about her life and then also in her relationship with, um, with this boy was I really just see her light. Like she's this bright light. She's this beautiful soul. She's this beautiful person. And I really believe that, you know, I really believe, and you can just see and feel in her that heart, you know, she really was just a pure, a pure one. And what really got me, and it's interesting because I don't watch a lot of meat. Like I try to stay away from a lot of media. And, and the thing is this, this story just today, I almost fell off my chair. So what really got me is in watching her um, where, you know, you can see her on a police cam before she was found, you know, before they said she was missing and she's crying and she's, you know, pouring out and, and she's so honest and, you know, um, you know, saying I've, I have OCD. She says I have anxiety and all these things. And she's really kind of taking the blame, you know, like in this whole, um, thing with her boyfriend you know like it was like she made it her, like it was her fault like oh i'm the one that did it and you know just just, just sweet soul and um really um just just so real you know and she's saying i'm you know i'm having anxiety and, and this and that and whatever and really just you know you know she was just so not pointing fingers you know and what made me so sad and the minute i saw that as I went, oh my gosh, she's being abused. Like this is an abusive relationship and it's classic narcissism, you know, on his part really. And I can, ex I'll explain more about that as well. But I was like, she's being abused. We went, went, and I've been through it. So I know that, I know that path and, you know, she's um, apologetic and, you know, anxiety and all of those things and thinking it's you and, you know, oh, I can imagine the torment that this girl was in. She was just tormented. This girl was so tormented and, it, and a poor soul. Um, and I could see exactly like she's going through abuse and people's call, they're calling her crazy, you know, like, oh, she's a mental issue, a mental health issue. And oh, look, at she's all crazy. And the other person is very calm. That's classic. That is classic of when a beautiful soul is being abused by a narcissist. Like it's classic. And it's been my whole life. So I understand it. I've lived it. I've lived it my entire life. And I finally feel like I'm finally breaking out of it. It can take a long time. And she's so young. I mean, that was me as a, as a young girl, that was me as well. And I, um, and I, and I, there's so much that there's so much that connects with, there's so much rooted in this. There's so it's very deep how much is here. It could, it's very, it's kind of complicated because it's very deep and entrenched with how much is in this, but what made me so sad is she's literally like almost crying for help without it. Like she didn't come out and say help, but she kind of was like, she was really kind of, well, she was, she was bawling her eyes out and she was terrified. Like she was, I could just, I guess it breaks my heart. She was terror, like in terror and, um, and scared. And I, and what happens in a situation, and this is again, classic, and it could be a woman or a man who's being abused, but it's classic of, you, nobody's hearing you. Like they don't hear you. They don't get it. Something's wrong with her. What's wrong with you? Calm down, you know, get over it. Um, like they didn't take it like, and I'm not blaming again, this is no one to blame. Here. I'm not trying to put blame on anyone. It's just kind of to highlight what is going on here is that no one like would hear her. Like, and she's like, the girl is terrified. And she's, it's like, and they, no one's really seen her. No one's, oh, I can feel this in my heart as I talk about it. No one's really seen her. And 
the reason why this light has to come on there's so many things but the reason the light has to come on this situation is the number one it's about there's abuse here so this is abuse emotionally there's narcissistic abuse it's called um this light you know will come on this for other you know children to to perhaps um be able to heal and grow um the, but the light has to come on this to see the reality of what this kind of abuse is and and it it has to it has to be seen because there's so many that are suffering in silence right now there's so many that are suffering there's so many in the shadows that i can feel it there are so many people in the shadows that are suffering in pain and these like this beautiful little heart you know that she's blaming you know she didn't oh it just kills me it kills me because she's so honest and real you know and and so young i mean she's so young she probably <laughs> didn't have a counselor you know she's so young but let's but the the but there's more to this that i want to kind of compound with all of this there's a lot in this story there's a lot in this story and because it's been my story i under i get it i lived it i lived it i lived it in the new age i was a new ager i was actually known i um almost had fame in it like i was on even television and things there were a couple of videos of me on tv i was you know i was I had a following i you know was a leader in the whole stuff and again it was just the you know wanting to bring good you know want to bring good to the world kind of kind of thing and you know and i believe that that this is there's just so much to examine in this about 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 that and that when one just in a kind of a pure there's almost a purity to it you know there's a purity of i just want to help people you know i want to bring light i want to help people and what i could see with her is a very same very very similar um very very similar and how i could see just by the things that she's involved in and there's a whole that's a whole nother um story as well because i could do a whole teaching on on all of that as well but the biggest thing is is with this whole thing with her and i could see the new age stuff around her like there's so many in the picture there's just so much and i don't even know that much about her but even the little i saw i could see it so i could see the new age and then what happens is because there is a component with it connected to rejection and let me just point this out there's a there's a component to rejection with it whether the person was rejected in their youth or they were rejected in school or they were maybe bullied or um what happens when there's been any kind of rejection there's this desire for love you know a desire to be loved and accepted there's a desire to be known and what often will happen because the person maybe has not been healed yet or because they had they did have that trauma um something happened and as a result of that of of lack of healing and then the trauma there's this root and if you don't deal with the root it's, it's literally like a root if you don't deal with the root you will keep repeating that pattern and it'll come up in life it'll come up in relationships it'll come up in love it'll come up with all the stuff where you literally will be having that replay and what what i see with it with her is how much light she has so much love she had and how here she was in something very very abusive like it's so obvious and it's so clear that this poor girl was being tormented like this girl was being absolutely tormented it is so obvious and here she was terrified like she was terrified and and um and 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 just didn't have any help there was nobody to rescue her there was nobody to help her and what hit me like a ton of bricks like a ton of bricks which i want to share with you is if i had never gotten saved like if i had not found the lord jesus christ in my life and, and i'll tell you a little bit more about that but if i had not gotten saved i truly believe i would not be here right now talking i would not be alive i know that for sure i cannot tell you how many times that the lord saved my life over and over he saved my life over and over because i was naive um i just didn't know i didn't know any better 
I didn't know any better. I grew up without a dad. My dad died when I was young. So I never had that kind of fatherly influence. My mother had to work, you know, full time because my dad died. So I was alone a lot and uh, bullied and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, caused me to be a people pleaser. You know, I immediately learned to like people please in school and I wanted people to like me. And so I would become whatever, you know, um, just that's where it, that people pleasing started in me. And I just wanted love. I mean, the bottom line is wanting love. You know, there's, that's where that comes from is just wanting to be loved and accepted. And what I saw with her as well is that same thing. I very similar again, you know, just a pure heart that she is. And I saw that in her as well. And the sadness I feel, um, is it's right now in the world and how much that this story, um, there's so much here in terms of being deceived, being misled, not being healed, having to dealt with rejection, um, trauma bonds that get formed when you're in, you know, something toxic, um, all of these things in this story, it, 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 it's all connected. It's all connected. And, and the biggest thing that I see with her, um, which makes me really, makes me really sad is that she was just trying, you know, she was trying and wanting to reach her people and, and, you know, doing her vlogs and all of those, all those kinds of things. And she ended up with somebody and I'm sure has his own issues, obviously, but ended up just being harmed. And we don't even know the full story yet, but it surely will probably come out. Um, but she ended up being completely harmed and, and, and now she's gone. And it, I like the reason why I just like, read this is I realized that I would not be alive. I would not be here if I had not been saved. And I, I don't mean this religiously. I want to explain that to you. It's there's a Jesus is real and it's not just a religion. It's Jesus Christ. I would not be here if I had not found God. And, and I found God later in my life. I didn't find him as a youth. Um, in my youth, I went on this journey and it wasn't until later. And I know the Lord saved my life. I mean, he saved me and I wouldn't be alive if I, I wouldn't be here right now. Had the, had God not saved me, I would not be alive to, to talk about it right now. I know that, I know that the, I know that in my bones that he saved me from that life. And, um, it's a real thing. You know, the Bible says there's only one way, you know, Jesus says, I am the way truth and the life that there's only one way there's only one way to God. Sorry, but I'm getting text messages here. Um, there's only one way to God and he's the way. And it's true. There's a narrow way that we have to walk. The narrow way leads to life. The broad way leads to destruction. And many, many go that way. And the narrow way that leads to life is Jesus Christ. And very few find it. This is in the Bible. This is in the word of God. That is an, it's a very narrow way. Um, you know, it's a very constricted tight, it's a tight way, but it's the safe way. It's a safe way. It has boundaries. It has protection in it. See all of the things of God of, of Jesus is it's um, from love to protect us from harm. You know, he says, um, I will give you a hope in a future. I'm not, not to harm you, but to give you hope in a future. It speaks in the book of Jeremiah. So it's all for good. He wants to protect us. And, and we need those boundaries. We need safety, you know, um, we, we need that. And, and so what hit me um, so strongly when I saw this story is I saw this little girl, you know, this little girl that she's just doing what, I mean, it's, it's all, it's everywhere. It's in the music, it's in Hollywood, it's, it's in, it's on the t-shirts. It's, uh, you know, yoga is very evil. That's a whole nother thing as well. It's people have no idea the origins of that. It's very evil. Um, the um, things that, you know, just things that you think are so innocent, but it's disguised. You know, Satan comes as an angel of light. Um, it's disguised. It isn't the true light. There's a false light. There's a counterfeit light. And then there's a true light, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the only true light that there is. And it's the only light that gives life. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ who died for us. And it's a, it's a re it's a real, very real reality. Um, it's very, very real. And um, why I believe at this time in the world right now, 
um, with all the things that are going on. Um, I believe at this time in the world right now, this story um, need, is being highlighted. And I believe God is highlighting the story. It's being highlighted because I believe we're in a time of the harvest of souls. This is a time for souls to come into the kingdom. Like we can see the separation of the wheat and tares. We can see this, you know, kind of end time things going on. And there's always this promise the Bible talks about, you know, and, you know, you know, the Bible speaks about go out and, and, and make disciples. And, and, and it's really important right now in this last time harvest that souls come into the kingdom, that souls get saved. And I believe this is a time right now that there are so many that are lost, especially the youth. I'm most concerned about the youth. Of course, I'm concerned about all people, but I'm most concerned about the, the young ones, the youth, because that was me. I didn't know. And I even had a mom that was saved, but I, she was, it's just that she, she had to work and things like that. And it's not that she didn't tell me, it's not like that. She didn't say, Oh, you need to, it's not like she did, she did, but I was in my own, you know, I'm going to, you know, wild, you know, wildlife. And, you know, in, in a, in a, in a good way, I thought I was like doing it, you know, and, and also was part of, you know, probably God's plan because he wanted, I think, you know, and sometimes we go through this because then one day we're going to tell the story. So it was part of God's plan for my life, but my biggest concern is the youth right now and and that they are shown the one way to god like the way the truth and the light there's only one way to heaven and it's jesus christ and so i i really wanted to share that um the other thing as well and this is another thing i wanted to add as well and this is also very this is also very hard but when you look at um this situation with this young girl and then she's in this relationship and you know probably more will come out about it as well because this is kind of a newer story but probably will more come out come out but there's a lot we can already like a friend saying to different people like saying things about about the boyfriend and and he's quite jealous and here's what happens is that I had to learn because also when you also when you become a Christian, you think you're like supposed to love everybody, which we are, we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and we are to love. But there's a lot of times when Jesus he has warnings, there are warnings in the Bible, and the warnings are always to protect us. You know, they're they're to protect us, and there are warnings about in the last days. Um, you know, it says people will get worse and worse, they'll be abusive and controlling, and they will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And it says, you know. Um, these men will work their way into homes and, you know, um, it's, I should just read the scripture because it's, um, right here. I'm gonna need my glasses to do that because this, this really hit, this really hit home for me. Um, and I'll tell you why I'm sharing this, but in second Timothy, if we look at second Timothy three, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with them. And in this part, they are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over weak willed women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth. And then it talks about just as John's and John Bras opposed Moses. So also these men oppose the truth, men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, but they will not get very far as in the case of, the, of, the, of those men, their, their folly, their folly will be clear to everyone. Their folly will be clear to everyone. So we see this in the scriptures. It's literally like a warning, you know, it's a warning in this. And, and, and the reason that I'm, the reason that I'm sharing that is because here's what happened for me as well with this. So I even recent, even recently, I had an experience and you know, I had an experience and being, being in that Christian love, which, you know, when your heart was with Jesus, you just like love people and you want to love everybody. But being in that Christian love, I met somebody who said they were a Christian and this person just became, um, 
very controlling and um, not at all like that fruit of the spirit, like love, patience, peace, you know, not, not all, none of that fruit of the spirit. And the thing is, because, you know, sometimes we were maybe taught like in church, like you just have to love everybody and reconcile with everybody. No, there are times when Jesus say, says, you know, kick the dust from your heels and move on. You know, there are times when Jesus walked away. I mean, Jesus, we see him walking away and, you know, Jesus really protected me. I mean, he really, really protected me because he warned me and he got me away from this person. And it was like a war, it was like a warning, um, a very loud warning. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy um, because this person presented themselves as Christian and all these different things. And so I was kind of, you know, it was like hard to, hard to make sense of. Um, but Jesus protected me in that incident. And that's another thing where I saw this red flag is I saw this red flag with um, Gabby and this man, this boy, um, her boyfriend, set very similar. And what happens when you're maybe wounded in yourself and you just simply like love everybody and you want everything to be good and you want, you know, being a people pleaser, you want everything to be okay. And that make, makes you nervous and, you know, anxiety and all that kind of stuff. Um, it actually is a huge, it's a huge thing. And we have, this is why Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give a warning, like, like a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of thing. You know, the Bible warns about that as well. You know, be not deceived. There'll be much deception in the last days. Um, there are warnings over and over and over. And the thing is me and my kind of naiveness, once again, being kind of naive and again, just trusting. Um, it was not easy. Again, I had to really like the Lord had to like really warn me, like, and, 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 and get me, you know, like I had to almost like I was an escape. And I honestly feel right now just for the pure hearts and, and those that, you know, they just want, they want love and maybe they're lonely or whatever is going on. Um, the Lord wants to bring this right now. I'm feeling a protection from him. I'm feeling his blood, you know, that protection I'm feeling because we are going through such a change and sifting the world as shaking. There's a sifting in the world right now, of the wheat and tares. There's so much going on right now. And we, in our own reasoning and our own logic, we, we don't understand. And, um, I had always prayed for wisdom, you know, be as wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. We need that wisdom in this hour and, 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 and have that wisdom. And, and that's why I feel like it's time right now, like the mothers and fathers in the faith, somebody's got to protect these young ones. They are the babes. They are the sheep. They are the little babes in the woods. Somebody's got to protect these people. So we need mothers and fathers to rise up right now in the earth, protect these ones we need schools. We need um, home schools. We need community schools. We need someone to protect these children because they're children. I mean, I didn't, I went through all of this, but it was at a different time. I'm not that old, but, but it was at a different time in the world. Um, I had to go through all of that, but this time right now in 2021 is very different. And we need moms and dads, mothers and fathers in the faith to rise up right now and pre be like watchmen to the nations. We need to be watchmen for the children. We need to really protect these children. They need um, guidance. They need mentoring. They need covering. They need discipleship. They need the truth, the truth of the word of God. They need the word of God more than anything. That's the meat. They need the word of God in their lives because it'll save them from harm. The tragedy of this, the tragedy of this, and it's a life, it's a life that Jesus died for. I mean, Jesus loves everyone and he died for them. And the tragedy of this is that this little girl, this baby girl, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful soul, my good, had she known, had she known um, if there had been somebody in her life or, you know, something, a mentor, a youth leader, something, um, you know, it, it, it's just, a, it's a, tra it's a tragedy on so many levels. And so I just wanted to share that today. Um, I also wanted to share too, to just really recognize the signs of being abused. I mean, even through all of the years of my life, and I would repeat it and repeat it and keep you know, because of my caring heart, you know, and here would be another one and another one, but there are signs to abuse, um, you know, the, the warning signs of 
where you know the one thing that that gabby kept saying is i'm 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 anxious you know she was crying she was not right in herself and you know it was all because of really what she was um going through and there's so many multiple layers to that there's a whole nother thing with that of uh, to, there's so much that that was going on with her um but there's some warning signs of um when you're not at peace because peace is a as a sign that's from god when there's peace um and when there's a lack of peace in something or you don't feel the peace of the spirit of god um that's a warning as well you know not that everything is easy and you know all love and light and easy it's not um but there's a peace you know that passeth all understanding that god gives us it's almost like a rest in the soul a rest that this is the right relationship for me um this is the direction to 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 go like the lord will you know light our paths illuminate the way we should go um he will make those steps clear as we follow his spirit but um i just wanted to share this um and again there's there's so much in this and and the biggest thing too is um and sharing how i was saved out of new age teachings um there's there's a lot connected with that and a lot of people are unaware but they do need a safe place and they do need prayer and and there's so much connected with that as well in terms of getting saved and then actually being discipled and safe you know in the boundaries of the right people um, so I just want to pray right now, Lord, I just ask you right now, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, right now for your Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we're in, you know, these are hard times in the world, but Lord, that you are, your light is shining in the darkness right now, that you are highlighting things right now to us, Lord, that we, things can be exposed right now in this hour, and you are shining your light on these things that are sorrowful, you're shining your light on things that are not of you you're shining on things that warning warnings to people to really get right with you to get right with god it just feels like that's a warning as well get right with god get your life right with god um finding the true the true true god which is jesus christ so i just thank you right now lord for your ministry for all that you want to do for people in the world at this time and that there would be safe havens safe harbors for these souls safe places for people to go and find the true gospel and and have their lives be healed restored and delivered um that there's their lives would be restored for your glory god and i thank you lord that you are just preparing the way right now and you're closing every door that the enemy has opened you're closing every door that the enemy perhaps has opened and that you are the way truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through you lord so we just thank you lord for the testimony the spirit of prophecy is a testimony of jesus and we thank you lord for your light and truth this day and in this hour we praise your name all glory all glory to you god thank you jesus so um i just you know wanted to share that and um you know there is always hope in every you know story there the hope is that perhaps so many people will actually come into the kingdom you know that perhaps many people will get saved um that is really always the hope you know is that we will see and we will learn and and we will heed the warning of the lord we will heed that warning so i thank you so much um i thank you for um listening and i will put my contact information down below um if you feel led, you know, if you feel led in any way, I'll just put that contact information down below. And um, I thank you and I bless you this day. Thank you. Take care. I forgot to hit the end of the recording. Oops. <laughs> I forgot to do the ending.